You don't need a great deal of kit to get started on Zwift. In fact, aside from your subscription to Zwift itself, all you've got to have is a basic turbo trainer, a speed sensor, and then just your smartphone, in fact, to use Zwift on. However, you could invest in some amazing equipment to enhance your experience. Wahoo have kindly supplied us with their full kicker range. So we have an interactive smart trainer, the fan, and the climb, which changes gradient as if you're outside. Yeah. The question is, though, what is actually the difference in experience between these two setups? We thought it was about time we put the two head to head to try and find out. We will start with our entry level setup. And we've gone and got ourselves a basic wheel on resistance trainer. It's actually got a magnetic resistance unit that is variable manually via this lever. Now, anyone who's been into cycling for a while is going to be very familiar with this type of turbo trainer because that's frankly what all turbo trainers used to be like. And for that reason, you can pick these up relatively inexpensively now. So it's a great way into the world of indoor training. To connect it up to Zwift though, as I mentioned at the start, you are gonna need a speed sensor. Importantly though, it's a speed sensor that connects to the device that you're gonna use it on. So if you have a speed sensor that transmits via amp plus, the chances are you're gonna need an adapter to actually pick up that signal from your computer or your laptop or whatever. In this case, it transmits via Bluetooth as well, which means I can pick it up directly from my smartphone, which is what I'll be using in this instance. Remembering to attach that speed sensor to your back wheel, because that's the only one that's spinning, of course, you then pair it up to your device where it can then tell Zwift how fast that back wheel is spinning. The clever bit is when you also tell Zwift what trainer you're using, because they have calculated just how much resistance each trainer generates, meaning that when it knows how fast that back wheel is spinning, it can then calculate how much power you're putting out in order to make it do that. So here we have the Wahoo Kicker, the Kicker Climb, and the Kicker Headwind. The Wahoo Kicker is their top of the range smart turbo trainer. And the obvious difference to this one and the one that Sly was using before is that my bike has no rear wheel. It is a direct drive turbo, which comes complete with its own cassette, meaning you'll no longer use your own rear wheel and you won't end up with those black marks all over the wall. Inside though is where the real difference lies. The turbo has a variable resistance unit and a power meter, meaning that it will both accurately calculate my output and adjust the resistance that I'm feeling in the pedals, depending on where I'm riding on Zwift. This means that riding uphill actually feels like going uphill and you will need to change gear accordingly. Up front then, and what we have here is the Wahoo Kicker Climb. This automatically simulates the gradient, again, mimicking what's going on on Zwift up to 20% incline and 10% decline. And finally, we have the Kicker Headwind. And this is a fan that connects to your turbo trainer or your heart rate monitor and adjusts the level of cooling based on the intensity you're riding. You can, of course, override this and just put it on full. Chris, shoey Zwift, let's. Um, before we start, apologies, mate, for making you go on the entry level setup. It just so happens that we don't have the necessary adapters for that trainer to allow me to fit my uh, my disc brake bike on there. So you're just going to have to tell me all about it, mate. Not sure that was the most sincere apology, but let's go on. All right, here we go. The first thing that you'll notice when riding a basic setup is that there is no direct feedback through the pedals, no resistance change as you ride uphill or downhill. Now, although I really miss that, I think it's probably fair to say that unless you've ridden a smart trainer, you won't actually know what you're missing anyway. But let's not focus on what you don't have, but what you do. You can still use all the social aspects of Zwift. You can log on and change your avatar, advance through all the levels, explore the worlds, and join group rides. And the training functionality is still there you can log on and use the multitude of training sessions that Zwift has and ride along to them. And don't forget, the effort I'm putting in is still the same no matter what the trainer. The estimation of power is also great for training, especially when it comes to tracking your improvements. If it's telling you have an FTP of 200 watts and you've boosted that up to 220, those are real fitness gains. Yes, it may not be that accurate, and the degree of error could mean that you've actually gone from 240 watts up to 270. But assuming you're always using the same setup, then the results should at least be consistent. So what then about our bells and whistles setup? What do we get? 
Well, following on from what Chris has just been saying about training, the power meter built in to this kicker is accurate to just 2%, meaning that we can use it to closely monitor our training. And it also means that we can actually compare our own results to other people's, because 2% accuracy is kind of like the gold standard. Now, you might not be into waggling around your FTP in front of other people, but what it does mean on Zwift is that you will be eligible to post results in Zwift Racing, because Zwift Racing knows that you're using equipment that can be trusted. The other point to note from the training sessions is that by using a smart trainer, you have an option opened up to you called Erg Mode, and this is where the trainer will generate the exact resistance required for each interval, and that's using the calculations that Zwift has made based on my own ability. So what it means in practice is that if, for example, the interval specifies 350 watts, so long as I'm turning the pedals, this trainer will generate that resistance that means that I will be doing 350 watts, no matter how fast or slowly I'm pedaling. For me though, it's probably the enhancement to the riding experience that's most notable. So the feedback that you get from the trainer depending on what's going on on screen. So as I start to climb, I'll feel the resistance kick in, meaning that I have to change gear. And then also with this kicker climb up front, the gradient of my bike changes, meaning that my body position changes as well. Now, although I'm not literally fighting gravity, it does kind of feel like it, just as the opposite is true. When I start going downhill, the resistance eases off and away I go. Now, I think it's fair to say that if you are using a smart trainer, just like if you had a power meter on your bike, then you can definitely enhance your training. You could probably get fitter as a result because you can really drill down and make sure the training you're doing is absolutely optimal. And then the other thing away from training, if you're just a big fan of riding on Zwift, the community, the social element, then having this setup will enhance the experience for you. But the good news is that in both those cases, it is of course, not essential. What I would do though, and what I would try and replicate from this onto the basic setup is firstly, a way of cooling yourself down. So you do get hot riding indoors. And so any old fan is better than nothing. Well, of course, the better the fan, the better your cooling will be. And the other thing is that although that smartphone that Chris is using is incredibly convenient, particularly if you're traveling around, you will find that you're more connected if you're using a bigger screen, so a tablet, or in this case, I've got an Apple TV connected up to a giant screen, and I do indeed feel very connected with my virtual world. And the good thing about that is it then leaves your phone free to use for the companion app. It's been a long time since I used Zwift on a completely normal indoor turbo trainer like this one, and it's quite weird not feeling the climbs or feeling the slipstream as others go past me, but, if I'd never experienced that, I wouldn't know I was missing out. No, but given that you went from an ordinary trainer to a smart trainer, how did that feel for you making that step up? Well, I really enjoyed it because I don't always do a training session, so when I logged on, I just wanted to go for a ride or go hard every now and again, kind of like a Farlek style thing. And to feel the climbs hit you, as opposed to you having to change gear to alter the intensity, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? With the, the extra investment of those interactive trainers, you get that element to which it's more realistic. And it also breaks up what's otherwise quite a linear experience in that, as you say, you have to respond. As my bike just angles there as the gradient kicks in, you have to respond to what's going on the road. So it breaks things up. You're changing gear. You're having to pick up your cadence, get used to those shifts in resistance. And it does feel very similar to riding outside. I guess the strength of the basic setup though, is that you have most of the elements of Zwift still at your disposal. So you've got all the training sessions yeah. and they will feel absolutely normal. You can get control those completely. And also you've got the social elements. So we are kind of riding together, aren't we? Yep. And well, I, I think I've dropped you. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I also get my power output here based on the slope curve of the turbo trainer. So I know just how hard I'm trying. Yeah. Is it accurate? Yeah, it probably is not too far off actually. Yeah, there we go.
As we conclude this video, there is one thing that we should mention first and foremost, and that is that we've got trainers at completely the opposite ends of the spectrum here. And it's not an either or situation because there are ones in the middle, aren't there? So you can get more basic interactive trainers that do not cost as much money, but that still give you the interactive feel that you get from Zwift. So they've got variable resistance units and they've also got built-in power meters as well. To get the most out of your standard turbo trainer, you want to keep a close eye on your tire pressures and the air pressure and air temperature in the room you're using it as well. This will help you get better, more consistent power readings. Yeah, that's right. So that every time you jump on it, you know that it's measuring your effort, even if it's not necessarily as accurate as a power meter or an interactive smart trainer. And let's face it as well, you are still getting almost all of the benefits of Zwift, even without those interactive elements. So you've got all of the training sessions, as we've already mentioned, you've got all of the social elements, you can join in the group rides, you can ride around those purpose-built worlds designed for cycling. Right, well make sure you get involved in the comment section down below. Hopefully, first and foremost, you found this video useful in terms of what you need to actually start Zwifting, or indeed make those next steps up but let us know what you use as well. We'd be really interested to read those down in the comments.